simply want to know that again what what I have said that urine in these patients urine will be yes will be dark colored and stool will be light colored with that because there is cholestasis bile acids also go to the circulation and bile salt and they produce severe itching so there is lot of excoriations or itching so when you does patient with itching and dark colored urine and light colored stool it is definitely a case of cholestasis and usually in cholestasis if it become prolonged lot of cholesterol is retained in the body and this cholesterol may produce special yellowish plaque under the skin we call them xanthomas and xanthelasmas xanthomas so what did we learn that in four and five cases when there is obstructive jaundice most important finding is urobilinogen absent from urine and conjugated bilirubin present in urine and conjugated hyperbilirubinemia and markers of canalicular injury appear first in the blood and in very high amount and markers of hepatocellular injury appear late and less in amount am I clear now after having said all of this now how do you differentiate really cases of 4 and 5 is it intrahepatic obstruction or extrahepatic obstruction very easy what will you do just do ultrasound if you do the ultrasound and you find common bile duct dilated it is extrahepatic obstruction and in this case right you go for ultrasound and ultrasound can tell you if common bile duct dilated then it is extra hepatic cholestasis but if common bile duct is common bile duct is normal diameter then it is intrahepatic obstruction if there is intrahepatic obstruction then bile is not going to common bile duct so it will not be dilated but if there is if there is suppose what is here papillary carcinoma or there is carcinoma of the head of the pancreas or the common bile duct carcinoma or there is a gallstone or structure or atresia all these things will produce what type of problem dilated what common, common bile duct is that right so extrahepatic biliary system if it is dilated you must think of extrahepatic cholestasis if they are not dilated we must think of intrahepatic cholestasis the next investigation which is important that if you find that there is extrahepatic what is there if there is extrahepatic cholestasis the next investigation should be ERCP ERCP what is ERCP endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography what you really do it that you pass a catheter from here endoscope from here and this endoscope is going and it is side viewing endoscope through this endoscope you have taken the endoscope through the oral cavity to the esophagus pharynx esophagus and then to the duodenum through the stomach and duodenum then this has a mirror you can say which can view on the side viewing duodenoscope we call it and it will uh, locate ample of water when it will amplify then we bring a catheter out of it what do we bring out of it a catheter and we engage the catheter into peplo of water and then we uh, put a radio opaque material so it can lead to and then we take up the x-ray so it, it can show the pancreatic duct as well as it can show the common bile duct and not only it can uh, show the anatomy of that area but it can show the level of obstruction as well is that right we call it ERCP endoscopic retrograde we are going retro this is going retrograde endoscopic retrograde cholangio pancreatography endoscopic then retrograde it's going in retrograde fashion right is pushing the dye in retrograde fashion uh, cholangio pancreatography is that right and another advanced form which has come here and that is replacing the ERCP as a, you can say investigative tool that is MRCP MRCP test what is MRCP magnetic resonance magnetic it is something like MR MRI 
MRI taking the information about the common bile duct and the ductal system. So we call it magnetic resonance cholangio pancreatography. These days this investigation is replacing wherever it is available ERCP for its diagnostic functions but not for its therapeutic functions. Now we come to this patient who has common bile duct problem. What you, go, what you will do with this patient who has common bile duct problem? Uh, sorry, common bile duct is normal. It means there is problem? Intrahepatic. If there is intrahepatic obstruction, what type of investigation will you do? The next? Yes. What is that? PTC. What is PTC? Percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. Percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. What you really do in this case that in the mid axillary line, first you percuss out the border of liver, right? In the mid axillary line, uh, guided by ultrasound, you push a needle, we should end up into some dilated radical of biliary collecting system, and there you inject the dye to visualize it. If all these things fail, you are, you are left with only to do liver biopsy. You are supposed to do liver biopsy. Again, let us come back. Now I will ask you a question. If a patient come to you, there is a patient who comes to you and patient is having, right, patient is having severe itching, this young female, severe itching, some xanthomas, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, right, no urobilinogen, lot of bilirubin urea, dark urine, light stool. What type of jaundice is this? Obstructive jaundice. AST, ALT are mildly raised and alkaline phosphatase, 5 nucleotidase and gamma glutamyl transferase are severely raised. So what is this? Obstructive, obstructive jaundice. jaundice. Now in this patient of obstructive jaundice, when you do ultrasound in this lady, common bile duct is not dilated. Is that right? If you do some autoimmunity profile, you find anti-mitochondrial antibodies very high. What do you think? Anti-mitochondrial antibodies are associated with primary biliary cirrhosis, autoimmune process which attack the biliary system. Is that right? Another case, patient come and patient is very much pale and jaundice. Pale mean hemoglobin is low and ecteris mean yellow color is there, right? And patient has strong history of blood transfusions previously due to he has been receiving blood transfusions due to severe, severe anemia. Is that right? His spleen is enlarged. Coombs test is positive against the RBCs. It means the RBCs are coated with autoantibodies. Is that right? Unconjugated bilirubin is 5.5 milligram per DL, right? With little increase in total. Urobalinogen in the urine is more than normal. Stool is dark colored, AST, ALT normal, prothrombin time normal, serum albumin normal, alkaline phosphate is normal, ultrasound shows normal ductal system and ductal anatomy. What do you think? This is extra vascular hemolysis because splenomegaly was there. It was extra vascular hemolysis. Now I will ask one more question. If a patient has come to you and patient has complained of, listen carefully, patient has severe anorexia, nausea, low grade fever with upper hypochondriac pain for many days. Patient has developed jaundice in which total bilirubin is high, conjugated is also high, unconjugated is also high. There is a mild to moderate increase in alkaline phosphatase serum alkaline phosphatase and gamma glutamyl transferase and GGT and uh, 5 nucleotidase and there is very high AST, ALT. What's wrong with them? There is hepatitis. And in this patient, uh, you find that hepatitis B surface antigen is positive as well as hep hep hepatitis B E antigen is positive. What is the what is diagnosis by now? Very clear. Acute. Acute? Acute. 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 Acute.
we cannot say is it acute or chronic. If it is less than 6 months, it must be considered acute. If it is more than 6 months, then it must be considered chronic. chronic. Is that right? Because in hepatitis, cutoff point is that evidence of liver injury is less than 6 months or more, more than 6 months. If it is less than 6 months, it should be considered acute. And if markers of liver injury or history is showing problem related with the liver is more than 6 months, then it is chronic. chronic. Is that clear? Okay, I will give you one more case. Patient is brought to you and patient has severe weight loss, severe anemia, severe abdominal pain, right, especially radiating backward. Patient has pale colored stool and steatoria dark colored urine, no urobalanogen there, AST, ALT slightly raised, serum alkaline phosphate is very much raised, conjugate bilirubin very much raised. Now, but it is obstructive jaundice, but there are special things I have said. There is old man in this case, there is old man, number one, number two, there is very significant weight loss, number three, there is severe pain in the abdomen radiating backward. It's very good. Carcinoma of head of pancreas, cancer of head of pancreas. But if same patient having lot of occult blood appearing into, you, into fecal matter, then it is probably carcinoma of amplifier. Is that clear? Any question here? Any question? No question? Class just